Hello, everybody. It is Mike Levin on Friday, April 16th, 2021. And when last we left off, we were doing a lot of SQL stuff. And you were seeing this package, SEOML, sort of start to really come together in uh, at least the first example that I give, which is emptying out all your Google Search Console data for the past 16 months and continuously um, filling in uh, any missing days. So it gets as many days as is accessible through Google Search Console and then creates some tables, uh, filling it into local SQL databases. However, the time has come for me to make sure that all this lovely documentation that I'm building into this notebook has been spell checked. And I went Googling for how to do this spell check stuff and I found a great one. It's getting really easy to install stuff. Uh, the black PEP8 uh, code formatter was this easy to install. You just type pip install and then some Jupyter Lab extension. And it, well, that one installed magic. So I had to deliberately import it. And because an import is happening with these special magics commands, there's really no need to do extensions. If I went into settings here and uh, you would see that my extensions are still actually uh, turned off. It might be advanced tools, I'm not sure. I gotta get used to this. Settings, enable extension manager. See, I don't have the extension manager enabled. So that's certainly gonna be the first step here. However, maybe not because I am seeing that there is different instructions uh, based on whether you are on Jupyter uh, Lab 2 point something or 3 point something. So I am going to update to 3, Jupyter Lab 3 here. Let me make sure I have that right. Yeah, here we go. See, for Jupyter Lab 3.x, it's that simple pip install command. But for Jupyter Lab 2.x, it's this uh, longer install from uh, not out of uh, PyPy, Jupyter Lab extension install from some person's thing. Uh, this is just not as appealing to me as going through PyPy and using a, a cleaner interface for doing these extension installs. So let's first upgrade ourselves to Jupyter Lab 3.x, right? Throw caution to the wind and just do it. So it appears that when you have a Conda installation, this is the magic command. So I will copy that. And since it's for Conda, we have three options of how to do this uh, kind of thing now. You can do it through a terminal, which you can always get to. From this little plus here you can hit this terminal and these terminals that open are actually connected to um, the virtual environment the python environment that's being used uh, for running your code now, this font is a little small so let's try doing one of those settings things settings advanced and this is going to be the terminal uh, font size. We'll just pop that up to 20 and you can see as fast as you save it there is a larger font size. Now it's all foobarred but I'm going to X out of that and open a new terminal and hopefully it should be prettier. There, that's prettier. 20 isn't even big enough. What should that be? Like 24? There, that's pretty for, for videos. So I could do that, uh, that command here. Maybe, yeah, so I could do it here. And that's probably a pretty good place to do it, but since I was showing you about the three uh, places to do it, hmm, 
I wonder if you could do it from right in a notebook. That is a really interesting question. You can certainly pip install now from in the notebook. And I would imagine for consistency's sake, you could probably do one of these conda installs right here uh, because it steps in and it knows that that is not a Python command, but rather is an install command. Uh, they've been improving Jupyter, arguably improving Jupyter to be able to do that kind of stuff. Um, it's a little bit scary, but it uh, it works with pip install. I am definitely not using that technique. I'm going to be using the third technique, which is to open a separate terminal to an Anaconda PowerShell. It's interesting. I've been, you know, getting myself on the recent Anaconda on, on my on my Mac that I keep around. I've been keeping my Mac here to make sure I understand uh, Anaconda, what's going on on the Mac platform with it. And they got rid of the uh, Anaconda prompt, it seems. I can't bring up a, a Unix terminal with the uh, virtual uh, uh, V, E, and V of, uh, you know, base uh, for the Mac uh, with Anaconda. But at any rate, this is the third place to do it. And I'm going to do it here because I like working in standard terminal shells. Collecting package metadata, solving environment. So this is the Conda software repository system that you're seeing do its thing. Conda is Anaconda's repo system. It is the equivalent of the Python packaging index, PyPy, which is also a repo system. And uh, most Python people do pip installs because it's now what ships uh, standard with Python 3. Um, it didn't always have a built-in repo system. It, you know, it used to be uh, a bunch of other ways it all got put together. However, PyPy has now been uh, standardized and made part of uh, Python. And uh, further still, all the things that caused installation problems have more or less been solved, namely including the binary executable for your hardware platform. So this Conda install stuff is just not needed as much. Now I'm gonna do a before and after. I didn't even quit out of this before I did it, but I can go to, um, let's see, I guess it's, where is that about? Help about, it's the first under there. So you can see I'm on 2.2.6, right? Jupyter Lab 2.2.6. So now I'm going to do a save on my last notebook. X out of everything. Well, yeah, because I'll be able to get that, that back with a Control Shift T. X out of there. And then run rerun Jupyter Lab with my old shortcut and see if a new version comes up. If not, I will have to update my shortcut, which is fine, but I'm curious. Help. About Jupyter Lab. There it is, 3.0.14. I am now on the uh, new Jupyter Lab. It definitely even looks prettier. And now I do my Control Shift T to get my old tabs back, get rid of that last window that's there. You can see the server still running here. Jupyter is always going to have a server window open like that. Unlike VS Code, some would you know claim that's an advantage of VS Code, and Microsoft definitely uh, did clean up the presentation of the, shall we call them, Jupyter features, the Jupyter lifted features uh, that VS Code uses. Okay, so uh, our notebook should probably still be in memory. There it is. You can see it's running there, and. Uh, Bring this out a bit. I guess you can't jump right to it. No, it's not. So we just run it again. That is in my GitHub folder. SEOML. MLSEO. SEOML. And uh, the core file. It's the naming convention of, convention of NBDev there. Okay, so now spell checking. Now I can just pip install Jupyter Lab spell checker. 
Same deal, we do that from an anaconda prompt. And now I should have a spell checker. I do not know if I need to restart it. I'm just going to do a refresh. That has not restarted the, the actual Jupyter server, but we will take a look. I believe it works in markdown cells, and there you go. See? Rotating guiles. Those are rotating files. Args is correct. Let's see if there's a right click for adding to the dictionary. I will be um, automatable it doesn't like, even though that is a, a good um, good term. Let's look over here at the spell checker. Based on this one, I realize on type of rational. Nice example. So it's real time as I'm typing here. If I type frong, something frong, that's the frong spelling. Works as promised. Watch mm, Got some stuff to learn. But that's it. I don't know about adding stuff to uh, a user library. Maybe you can't ask for that much right now. But this will definitely help me catch my spelling mistakes in these areas. Retrieve. Oh, I like to make that spelling mistake, don't I? Name tuples, hashable, originally. It's making me figure it out on my own, isn't it? Adjust spelling to. There it is. All right, we've got that. That's good. Oh, interesting. We have more than I thought. So name tuples. Let's see if I can train that. No spelling suggestion. If it doesn't, oh, ignore? Okay, ignore. I wonder if ignore is uh, permanent memory or not. Ignore. Ignore. Oh, see, it didn't get Oh, that was the plural version before. This is the singular version, so there it knocked out those. Okay, I'm pretty happy. We got spell checking in uh, in Jupiter. Jupiter Lab, there are some nuances. But I'm quite happy. Dict name with its intent. Yeah. So that's correct. But there you see, you know, where I'm going with this documentation. I'm talking about using Python dictionaries, which work like this, NoSQL, uh, where no planning is required. Two columns, key value pair, key goes in, value comes out. Sometimes there's field stuffing. Often it's the response from an API. Um, but if you use SQLite dict, this thing you can pip install from PyPy. It makes dicts work with the SQLite 3. So you can have SQLite 3 with just the two columns back ending um, Python dicts, the dict data type, so that they become persistent. And you can now use the standard Python dictionary data type as a um, persistent dictionary. You can see here as long as it's under that with open or with SQL dict in this case, uh, there that establishes your dictionary name. And then you can use that dictionary name. And then the next time you use it, that data will still be there instead of poofing in between runs. So since I'm uh, making sure that I document this so well uh, for myself and for you know the world out there, because just like my YouTube videos in general, I do most of this stuff primarily for myself and secondarily for the audience out there. Uh, but since I'm documenting it so well uh, for myself, I figure I might as well uh, 
spell check it and get rid of the spelling mistakes for you. And so that's it for this video. Uh, when next you join me, I will be taking it to the next steps, which will probably be SERP scraping, search engine result uh, page, uh, search engine result page uh, scraping and storing, probably using Chrome automation to make it interesting. Uh, thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. And don't forget to subscribe.